All right. So, um, next part will be his um, his um, cloak. Mm -hmm. um, I want to have that in a um, dark blue. And there's <coughs> one color, one paint that uh, the non-regulars might not know this yet. Ben is kind of in love with. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's dark sea blue. Mm -hmm. from uh, model color and it's very nice I like to use that color a lot because it's a nice desaturated blue and you can use that very well as a, as a shallow color for almost everything mm -hmm. a bit of black here oh my gosh. And you can see why the cloak uh, is done now. And uh, Ben said this uh, just before, uh, at the end of the last chapter, that um, in order not to kind of touch areas later on, like the, the, if you did the pants now, yeah. that would not be the best solution. Yeah, especially this area here is kind of hard to reach. Yeah. yeah and the nice thing is that uh, the cloak, of course, is a very large part of the miniature. And you'll see that. Uh, Probably not going to spend as much time on the cloak than uh, on some of the other areas. So that'll actually get us quite a bit ahead. Now I see you do something right now which you uh, rarely do actually is um, painting something completely. Yeah, um, the thing with the uh, dark sea blue is it's very dark once mm -hmm. it's dry. You can see that on here. So it's uh, quite close to the black and um, I'm just putting uh, the color all over the, um, the um, surface mm -hmm. uh, so I can see where I want to place the, the highlights because it okay. won't really blend over the, the whole surface. I will mm -hmm. keep lots of the dark sea blue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also to see um, how I actually want the blue to turn out. I wanted to add some uh, turquoise and for the highlights as well. Not only uh, white, so the blue will be stronger in the highlights. Um, and I can try that out here and then see how I proceed on the rest. Okay. But you probably keep it at one layer? Yeah. Yeah. Also it's... Uh, Rather thick. Yeah, I can tell. Right, so uh, Ben has been using a hairdryer to um, kind of blow dry the paint. And uh, there's uh, just one little thing I want to mention that is um, you don't want to put it on full heat with a sword like that because that's <laughs> it's going to melt. Yeah. yeah. So if you have a hairdryer that um, um, can do cold air, that's perfect. Yeah, and if not, and it's still warm, you always have to be careful also when you continue painting that the surface is not too warm, otherwise your paint will just dry immediately on, mm -hmm. the, on the figure. Mm, I'm mixing a little bit of the turquoise into the um, dark sea blue. And we'll start working here on the highlights.
a bit of white to the tip. So loaded brush again. Yes, wipe it off because it was a bit too much. Yep. And the clean brush is feathering out the very last bit of it. <coughs> yeah, you can already see that the that there's a lot of contrast going on in that little bit. Yeah, and I will just proceed like that, uh, wrinkle by wrinkle. been painting with um, uh, like on a higher standard and trying to do things like this with glazes you know how long this takes uh, and that is that is probably the number one reason why the loaded brush technique is something that it's definitely worth trying because your speed is going to be like 10 times as fast as with normal glazes It's also a technique that works particularly well on gaming models because you can create uh, much more contrast and, uh, and and still nice blendings even on a gaming model. Yeah, especially I think uh, really you can decide at what um, point you you want to stop the the blending work and mm. just leave it like that and it still looks okay. And if you wanted to push it really to a perfect level, you can just correct it with glazes and. Mm -hmm. I try not to go into the pure white as I did with the um, the non-metal because uh, I want it to be not as reflective. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it looks a bit uh, like he would wear a, a tinfoil jacket or something. <laughs> so <clears throat> I already know I should totally make my tinfoil head. <laughs> See that Ben first created very very strong contrast, just by om omitting to paint on some areas, and now with these glazes, you know, bring things together. Yeah, also put a light, uh, which is important. Yeah, especially here around that, uh, that edge, because mm -hmm. um, I want the light to be caught here on the top side of the arm, mm -hmm. and um, usually uh, what you do in the, like the classical tabletop painting, you paint stuff that is uh, deep, you paint that dark, and stuff that is raised light. But you can see here we have quite a deep area, but it's on the top, so we need mm. that to be lighter actually than on the lower side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think I want that still to be a bit brighter on the top, so I'm adding a bit more white. I think I would do the. Uh, the other arm uh, in the very same way, so I could can do that off cam. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are back for the large parts of the cloak. Okay, great, we'll do that. Okay. Okay, okay. just uh, 10 minutes to the side uh, for the second arm. Yep, I also painted in here the seam line. Ah, okay. Uh, there is a small seam line in the, in the scalp, so I just uh, exaggerated tiny bit, mm -hmm. especially up here, it was kind of lost. Um, same here, a small seam line. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, that basically was the same thing as on the other arm. Yeah. Um, if you see now to do that, uh, now it's a little different. Now we have a very large surface. Mm -hmm. So we will do a wet blending on that surface. And um, therefore, I will put some of the uh, original base color, the um, dark sea blue, on the surface. Um, it's quite diluted. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, the reason for it being diluted is that uh, there's already a dark layer on there right now, uh, yep. on black, which of course makes it even darker than the color actually is. And if you don't use a diluted paint now, um, the saturation of the blue will just go up and it turns bluer than, than I guess we want to. Yeah, and also we don't need uh, to add actually so much paint there. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm placing the highlight color. And just blending it over the wet circle. Okay, we let that dry so we can judge it better. Yeah, it's taking about what five seconds. <clears throat> and again, this is uh, the wet and wet and uh, loaded black brush techniques are both just if you if you know how to use them, they'll get your results fast. And even if they're not 100% perfect on the first try, you still can go and do the um, uh, glazes to correct little things on top of that. Yeah. So dark base color here again. Highlight color. And now I want to extend the highlight a bit here over because we have here a quite a large area that should be the same level of light. Mm -hmm. So I can do a little bit dark zebra up here. Some highlight color. Okay, clean the brush and blend them together. Okay. You just simply clean the brush? Yeah. Okay. Also, I'm taking a clean brush to soft it out a bit to the lower side. Mm -hmm. I uh, just want to push it a bit stronger uh, just with a glaze of the light blue. I'm putting it down and feathering it out to the sides. Again with a clean brush. Yeah. yeah. This uh, feathering, what it does basically, it, since it's just water, um, you are um, distributing the pigments on the side of whatever paint you've just pumped, uh, put down um, as far as possible. Uh, and this way you have absolutely no borders, uh, kind of these coffee stain drying yep. uh, areas. Now I will start to, uh, to pick out elements like the seam line here and to focus on one side and work a little on that, increase mm -hmm. things here. So, first of all, a bit of black to get a dark line. Mm -hmm. A brighter line just next to it. Yeah, here you can just decide which side you want, that's really... Yeah, we would, we, would, we, we would choose uh, this side here yeah. because of the direction of the light. Yeah, well, the the light comes a little bit from the the right top right if you want, so the light should be caught on the left side of that uh, seam line. And I will soft it out a bit here. In the highlight area to make it not look too much of a line. Also a bit on the other side. 
Well, the direction of the brush that uh, then is pushing the pigments towards the seam line now. Actually, working with glazes is something that that uh, I find very satisfying. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's really you can't mess things up. Um, if it's not enough, basically you just do it again. Uh, and just watching paint dry literally is just uh, it's very pleasant. <laughs> You can see how thin it is uh, as uh, the paint uh, is drying right away. Actually, you literally watch it dry. See? Yeah, I think the uh, the level of um, contrast is quite good right now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to overdo it again. Um, I want to introduce some dirt later on here in that area, uh, on the lower side here. So I don't need to take care so much of the shadow side here. Mm. Um, the little uh, piece on the on the right side, the, the bottom part, are you going to highlight that at all or is it just going to be dirt? Um, this will be just a tiny bit highlighted but uh, I guess just one or two goes with the glaze. Mm. Put it down and soft it out a bit to the top with a clean brush. So when you're watching this video and you see hop in glazes, for example, um, um, and, and maybe you kind of uh, rewind for a few seconds, just note the brush direction. These kind of little things are very important because uh, if you do the glaze in the wrong direction, it's not going to look good. You'll have all of the, the coffee stain borders and stuff. Yeah, because you will have the, the pigments drying on the, actually in, in wrong places. You want the lighter part to be here, so that's why the pigments have to collect here. Mm -hmm. So that will be wet. All right. So, um, yeah, it's important to put highlights on those areas as well. Also, if you yeah, there's a little there's a little wrink wrinkle in there. Yeah, that's it. we need to. I think I will actually put a bit more light on that to exaggerate that a bit. to get a nice ending point here. Yeah, like that. Like that. Okay. Overall the contrast and the detail on the um, cloak shouldn't be that strong because it's very round and very soft. Yeah. Definitely, you can see almost no, no big wrinkles in there. Mm -hmm. um, for the um, highlight here on the that top part, uh, the wrinkle, we will also do a wet blending. So we need some thin base color on there. All right, so uh, the color was quite thin, so I will repeat the process. Okay, and the brush and feather it out. So some of the dark sea blue down here. I think I will continue with uh, that side off cam. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just the very <coughs> same again uh, with some uh, nice wrinkles here. Yeah. Are we going to show the inside at all, or is it just going to be black and a little? Um, the inside will be, at least at this part here, will be highlighted the very same. The rest will stay pretty much in dark sea blue. Yeah. I won't actually do a lot because I will do some dirt on there. Mm -hmm. And I think that should be enough. Okay. And that's going to be a little bit more work on that, on that flap on the front, I guess. 
yeah uh, like a transition from light to dark yeah I have it here also I wanted to bring up the color here a yeah. bit more yeah, yeah. okay but yeah I think you've all seen it um, again uh, wet and wet technique um, basically mixing the paints um, into transitions on the miniature directly um, very useful skill to have um, not that hard uh, no, and know, really good. for especially for soft surfaces like yeah. that, it's yeah. really really nice. Okay, we'll be back after we're done with the cloak so far. Okay. Yep. All right. So uh, let's see, proceed up here. So with um, quite a, some highlight up here. Mm -hmm. Um. I also just uh, framed the that small line. It's very hard actually to see in the scope, but you can see, especially up here, you can see. There is like a little a, border. Yeah, uh, we will paint the border in uh, somewhat off-white cream tone. Um, we want to make sure it's not too bright, mm. um, otherwise it's taking too much attention from the from the non-metal. Mm -hmm. um, we will also paint uh, the pants in a similar color, not to have too many colors going on in the. Uh, on the miniature, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, we need to paint that um, definitely before we add the dirt on the lower side, right? Because um, the water is just running around there. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, as I said, it's it's hard to see on the sculpt actually. It is sculpted. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't want to make it too dominant. Yeah, I'm mixing some um, black and some rucksack tan. And some white. Uh, Rucksack 10 is a color by P3. It's uh, quite a nice opaque, uh, somewhat yellow color, mm -hmm. yellow beige. I also use this for faces uh, quite a bit on you. Yeah, I, I discovered the, uh, that color not so long ago and I like quite the, the uh, intensity of it. Mm -hmm. How's the paint it itself? It's a P3 paint. Um, I like them actually quite a lot. Um, one thing is they're a bit uh, glossy, a bit like the old game social colors. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sometimes that is quite desirable. Yeah, maybe let's talk a little bit about uh, paints real quick because um, this is not going to be the most exciting part of the video. <laughs> the um, we always get a question about what, what is the recipe, what paint have you been using and so on. And um, it's actually a question that uh, we don't really like to answer that much uh, because it's not about um, like exact recipes when it comes to painting. Um, and it's also not like there's not one best color. Uh, for example, we like the new matte scale, uh, scale uh, 75 colors a lot for just because they're matte. Um, and then there's other colors like the, the Games Workshop colors or like the P3s that have a, a slight um, satin uh, look to them. Um, the Vallejo colors are more neutral, for example. They're not as matte, but they're also not as shiny. So um, um, we always say it's important to know about the property of a paint. Yeah. Um, for example, a skin should not be matte. Um, and a cloth, like, 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 a, like a cotton cloth, never should look shiny, these kind of things. And you can actually choose different paints for that. Um, also, the exact color is not always that important. Um, yeah, it really depends on uh, what mo what mood you want to create on your miniature, mm -hmm. and I think it's therefore not so good to always think in, in recipes um, because you, you you know your for example your goal shouldn't not necessarily look the same on all pieces. If you paint an army that. Yeah, is a different topic because you you really uh, need to be uh, consistent with within a lot of miniatures. Mm -hmm. But for showcase painting, really, uh, I would advise you to to forget about recipes and just experiment a bit how uh, how and what color influences your atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I'm mixing it here, and for the shadow parts, I'm already mixing it with a bit of black more of black because I don't want that here to be all that bright yeah can 
probably call this the dirty brush technique where um, Ben just picks up a little lighter tone and a little um, darker tone again uh, whenever he needs it uh, without cleaning the brush first. And that also creates uh, nice transitions and stuff. Now obviously this uh, detail is very small, um, the, it's not very wide uh, to paint. Uh, again, a uh, good tip is just the best tip we can provide you with, <laughs> it has to be. Uh, and also um, it's important to um, um, stabilize your miniature in a way that it doesn't move too much, uh, your brush doesn't move too much. Yeah, the problem with uh, that tiny detail is that it's also not uh, that raised, so yeah. we cannot really paint it with uh, the side, side of the brush yeah. comfortably. So. I'm doing that, but it's really also kind of tricky. And as it's not um, as defined as I would like it to be, to also paint a very thin dark line here to the top. Just uh, note how um, Ben stabilizes the match right now. Um, the hands are a little interlocked on the cork. Um, his pinky is uh, kind of resting on the cork. The distance between uh, brush tip and fingers is very small. So just everything to make sure you can cre um, create like a thin line. And usually in our videos we have a lot of these uh, explanations as well. Um, because they are important. It's something you don't look at. Um, most people start with, oh, what, what colors is he using? <laughs> and then it's like, okay, what techniques is he using? And uh, once you got all those down, then you still can create a, a thin line. And there's, oh, yeah, he's actually interlocking his hands. So it's, uh, there's a lot to, to learn from the video. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think... Um I will just continue with the, the same color in the same same way all around the miniature mm -hmm. and we'll use also the same color to just put put some of the base tone here on the uh, sleeves. Yeah. Okay, we'll be back uh, once that is done. All right. Um, I painted the part here of the uh, sleeve in a, a bit brighter shade of the, the same color that I did here on the, on the, border. the borders here. Mm -hmm. Same on the other hand. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's do some dirt down here. Mm, I want this part here to have some like sprinkle on mud or something on there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I will do a um, just some tiny dots and then wash them out with a different brown. All right. So here I have some uh, mud brown on the palette and I will take some of the, also put some the strong tone wash on the, on the palette from Army Painter. Right. Yeah, it's interesting you said uh, sprinkled on dirt, but the one thing you don't do is you don't take a toothbrush and sprinkle it on. Um, you just want the control and be able to uh, place the dirt where it needs to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to sprinkle it on look, but not really, um, because it's quite dangerous to just sprinkle things. You could do that with a larger brush and just sprinkle it on, sprinkle it on. But yeah, as you said, it's very uncontrolled, so it could also ruin parts like the, the jackpot for example. Yeah. Okay, and I will also add um, some in a different brown tone. Um, so I'll take some tank brown and some of the strong tone wash. I think the, the most difficult thing here is to keep them really random. 
I think as soon as you start to think too much, <laughs> they stop being random. Okay, and do you solve that tone? No. Um, just put it here in the shadow. And clean the brush. Just pull it here over the surface. Big clean brush. That way, here it will just more uh, vanish in the shadows. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm doing this and my dots have become way too strong. What can I do? Start crying and roll on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just what you want me to do, so you can laugh at me. No. <laughs> okay, well, I will answer my own question. You can just glaze over them again with blue to bring them back a little bit. Yes, that's, <laughs> the, that's the thing to do, actually. <laughs> So right now I'm just uh, having a bit of the lighter color again in the brush, I'm just dabbing here over it in a thinner, in a thinner, um, diluted, more diluted way to get it like a dusty look here on the on the edge. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think um, it gives a nice little uh, detail there. Yeah, and. Especially here in the in the inner part of the uh, of the cloak where it's really dark, um, I will just use a bit more of the the darker tones. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also nice to give some interest because, as you can see, we didn't really do any blending work in there. Yeah, yeah, we don't plan to do like a like a big freehand or anything like this. And yeah. uh, this adds detail and it's easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the same effect that a freehand has. Uh, something yeah. to look at. <clears throat> and yeah, I think I, I also like the the addition of detail here that you have by just adding these little dots. Mm -hmm. Also, you have the nice contrast between the nice blending in the blue and some kind of texture. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll, I'd say we'll uh, do the rest again off cam. This is really no uh, yeah. rocketeer science. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the puns. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll come back when that is done. Okay. All right.